Michael Gambon. Sir Michael John Gambon CBE is an Irish-born English actor who has worked in theatre, television and film. A highly respected theatre actor, Gambon is also recognised for his roles as Philip Marlowe in the BBC television serial The Singing Detective, as Jules Maigret in the 1990s ITV serial Maigret, and as Professor Albus Dumbledore in the final six Harry Potter films. Early Life and Education Gambon was born in Cabra, Dublin, during World War II. His father, Edward Gambon, was an engineer, and his mother, Mary, nay Hall, was a seamstress. His father decided to seek work in the rebuilding of London, and so the family moved to Mornington Crescent in North London, when Gambon was five. His father had him made a British citizen, a decision that would later allow Gambon to receive a substantive rather than honorary, knighthood and CBE. Brought up as a strict Roman Catholic, he attended St. Aloysius Boys' School in Somers Town and served at the altar. He then moved to St. Aloysius College in Hornsey Lane, Highgate, London, whose former pupils include Peter Sellers and Joe Cole. He later attended a school in Kent, before leaving with no qualifications at 15. He then gained an apprenticeship with Vickers Armstrong as a toolmaker. By the time he was 21, he was a fully qualified engineer. He kept the job for a further year, acquiring a fascination and passion for collecting antique guns, clocks, watches, and classic cars. Early work At the age of 18, Gambon began drama school at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, RADA, in London, where he studied classical acting for three years, eventually receiving a BA in classical acting. Whilst at RADA, Gambon acted in plays by William Shakespeare, Anton Chekhov and many others. Aged 19, while at RADA, he joined the Unity Theatre and King's Cross. Five years later he wrote a letter to Michael McLeanwa, the Irish theatre impresario who ran Dublin's Gate Theatre. It was accompanied by a CV describing a rich and holy imaginary theatre career, and he was taken on. Gambon made his professional stage debut in the Gate Theatre Dublin's 1962 production of Othello, playing Second Gentleman, followed by a European tour. A year later, cheekily auditioning with the opening soliloquy from Richard III, he caught the eye of star maker Laurence Olivier who was recruiting promising spear carriers for his new National Theatre Company. Gambon, along with Robert Stevens, Derek Jacobi and Frank Finlay, was hired as one of the to-be-renowned and played any number of small roles, appearing on cast lists as Mike Gambon. The company initially performed at the Old Vic, their first production being Hamlet, directed by Olivier and starring Peter O'Toole. Gambon played for four years in many NT productions, including named roles in The Recruiting Officer and The Royal Hunter the Sun, working with directors William Gaskell and John Dexter. Theatre after three years at the Old Vic, Olivier advised Gambon to gain experience in provincial rep in 1967, he left the NT for the Birmingham Repertory Company, which was to give him his first crack at the title roles in Othello, his favourite, Macbeth and Coriolanus. Gambon was suggested for the role of James Bond in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, 1969, although he was dismissed for being even less known than George Lazenby who was cast. His rise to fame began in 1974 when Eric Thompson cast him as the melancholy vet in Alan Ake Burns' The Norman Conquests at Greenwich. A speedy transfer to the West End established him as a comic actor, squatting at a crowded dining table on a tiny chair and agonizing over a choice between black or white coffee. Back at the National, now on the South Bank, his next turning point was Peter Hall's premiere staging of Harold Pinter's Betrayal, a performance marked by subtlety. A production photograph shows him embracing Penelope Wilton with sensitive hands and long slim fingers, the touch of a master clockmaker. He is also one of the few actors to have mastered the demands of the vast Olivier Theatre. As Simon Callow once said, Gambon's iron lungs and overwhelming charisma are able to command a sort of operatic full-throatedness which triumphs over hard walls and long distances. This was to serve him in good stead in John Dexter's masterly staging of The Life of Galileo in 1980, the first Brecht to become a popular success. 
Hall called him unsentimental, dangerous and immensely powerful, and the Sunday Times called his performance a decisive step in the direction of great tragedy. Great acting, while fellow actors paid him the rare compliment of applauding him in the dressing room on the first night. From the first Ralph Richardson dubbed him the Great Gambon, an accolade which stuck, outshining his 1990 CBE, even the later knighthood, although Gambon dismisses it as a circus slogan. But as Sheridan Morley perceptively remarked in 2000, when reviewing Nicholas Wright's Cressida, Gambon's eccentricity on stage now begins to rival that of his great mentor Richardson. Also like Richardson, interviews are rarely given and raise more questions than they answer. Gambon is a very private person, a non-starry star as Aikburn has called him. Offstage he prefers to stay out of the limelight. While he has won screen acclaim, his ravaged King Lear at Stratford, while he was still in his early forties, formed a double act with a red-nosed Anthony Sher as the fool sitting on his master's knee like a ventriloquist's doll. There were also appearances in Pinter's Old Times at the Haymarket Theatre and Johnson's Volpone and the brutal sergeant in Pinter's Mountain Language. David Hare's Skylight, with Leo Williams, which opened to rave reviews at the National in 1995, transferred first to Wyndham's Theatre and then on to Broadway for a four-month run which left him in a state of advanced exhaustion. Skylight was ten times as hard to play as anything I've ever done he told Michael Owen in the Evening Standard. I had a great time in New York, but wanted to return. Gambon was not among the actors to grace Yasmina Reese's A.R.T. at Wyndham's. But together with Simon Russell Beale and Alan Bates he gave a droll radio account of the role of Mark. And for the RSC he shared Reese's two-handed The Unexpected Man with Eileen Atkins, first at the pit in the Barbican and then at the Duchess Theatre, a production also intended for New York but finally delayed by other commitments. In 2001 he played what he described as a physically repulsive Davis in Patrick Marber's revival of Pinter's The Caretaker, but he found the rehearsal period an unhappy experience, and felt that he had let down the author. A year later, playing opposite Daniel Craig, he portrayed the father of a series of cloned sons in Carol Churchill's A Number at the Royal Court, notable for a recumbent moment when he smoked a cigarette the brightly lit spiral of smoke rising against a black backdrop, an effect which he dreamed up during rehearsals. In 2004, Gambon played the lead role, Ham, in Samuel Beckett's post-apocalyptic play Endgame at the Albury Theatre, London. In 2005 he finally achieved a lifelong ambition to play Falstaff, in Nicholas Hitner's national production of Henry IV, Parts 1 and 2, co-starring with Matthew McFadden as Prince Hal. He performed as Joe in Beckett's A. Joe, giving two performances a night at the Duke of York's Theatre in London. In 2008 Gambon appeared in the role of Hearst in No Man's Land by Harold Pinter in the Gate Theatre, Dublin, opposite David Bradley as Spooner, in a production directed by Rupert Jewell, which transferred to the London West End's Duke of York's Theatre, for which roles each received nominations for the 2009 Laurence Olivier Award for Best Actor. In late 2009 Gambon had to withdraw from his role of W. H. Auden in The Habit of Art, being replaced by Richard Griffiths, because of ill health. In April 2010, Gambon returned once again to the Gate Theatre Dublin to appear in Samuel Beckett's Crap's Last Tape, which transferred to London's Duchess Theatre in October 2010. In 2012 he starred with Eileen Atkins in an adaptation of Beckett's radio play, All That Fall. Its premiere was at the German Street Theatre and it later transferred to the Arts Theatre. All That Fall had such good reviews in London that they took it to New York. In New York they recast the role of Jerry and Liam Thrift got the part. They were a huge hit in New York, in 2013, and sold out the whole run after four days. Film, Television and Radio he made his film debut in the Laurence Olivier Othello in 1965. He then played romantic leads, notably in the BBC television series, The Borderers, 1968-70, in which he was swashbuckling Gavin Kerr. As a result, Gambon was asked by James Bond producer Cubby Broccoli to audition for the role in 1970, to replace George Lazenby. His craggy looks soon made him into a character actor, 
although he won critical acclaim as Galileo and John Dexter's production of The Life of Galileo by Brecht at the National Theatre in 1980. But it was not until Dennis Potter's The Singing Detective, 1986, that he became a household name. After this success, for which he won a BAFTA, his work includes such controversial films as The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover, which also starred Helen Mirren. In 1992 he played a psychotic general in the Barry Levinson film Toys and he also starred as George Simonon's detective inspector Jules Maigret in an ITV adaptation of Simonon's series of books. He starred as Fyodor Dostoevsky in the Hungarian director Karoly Max movie The Gambler, 1997, about the writing of Dostoevsky's novella The Gambler. In recent years, films such as Dancing at Lunasa, 1998, Plunkett and McLean, 1998, and Sleepy Hollow, 1999, as well as television appearances in series such as Wives and Daughters, 1999, for which he won another BAFTA a made-for-TV adaptation of Samuel Beckett's Endgame, 2001, and Perfect Strangers, 2001, have revealed a talent for comedy. Gambon played President Lyndon B. Johnson in the television film Path to War. For this performance, he was nominated for an Emmy Award for Best Actor in a Miniseries or Movie and a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor in a Miniseries or Motion Picture made for television. In 2003, he appeared with Robert Duvall and Kevin Costner, playing the principal villain in the Western film Open Range. In 2004, he appeared in five films, including Wes Anderson's quirky comedy The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizzer, the British gangster flick Lair Cake, theatrical drama Being Julia, and CGI action fantasy Sky Captain and The World of Tomorrow. In 2004, he began playing Albus Dumbledore. Hogwarts is headmaster in the third installment of J.K. Rowling's franchise, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, taking over the role after the death of Richard Harris. Harris had also played Maigret on television four years before Gambon took that role. Gambon reprised the role of Dumbledore in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which was released in November 2005 in the United Kingdom and the United States. He returned to the role again in the fifth film. 2007's Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and the sixth film, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. He appeared in the seventh film, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Parts I and II, released in two parts in 2010 and 2011. Gambon told an interviewer that, when playing Dumbledore, he does not have to play anyone really. I just stick on a beard and play me, so it's no great feat. I never ease into a role. Every part one play is just a variant of my own personality. I'm not really a character actor at all. In 1990 he played Jerry in Harold Pinter's Betrayal for BBC Radio 3. In 2006 he played Henry and Stephen Rees' play about Samuel Beckett's Embers for Radio 3. In 2007 he was Sam in Harold Pinter's The Homecoming for Radio 3. Gambon currently does the voyage over to the New Guinness ads with the Penguins. In 2007 he played major roles in Stephen Poliakoff's Joe's Palace, and the five-part adaptation of Mrs. Gaskell's Cranford novels, both for BBC TV. He also appeared as the narrator in the British version of Crod Mandoon and the Flaming Sword of Fire. After Pinter's death on December 24, 2008, Gambon read Hurst's monologue selected by the playwright for Gambon to read at his funeral, held on December 31, 2008 during the cast's memorial remarks from the stage as well as at the funeral and also in words and music, transmitted on the BBC Radio 3 on February 22, 2009. In 2009 he played his role as Mr. Woodhouse in a television adaptation of Jane Austen's famously irrepressible Emma, a four-hour miniseries that premiered on BBC One in October 2009, co-starring Johnny Lee Miller and Romola Garay. Gambon received a 2010 Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Miniseries or a Movie nomination for his performance. Gambon appeared alongside Catherine Jenkins in the 2010 Christmas special of Doctor Who, A Christmas Carol. In 2012 he played a role in Dustin Hoffman's directorial debut with Quartet, based on the same title play by Ronald Harwood and starring Maggie Smith. 
He had previously worked with Hoffman in the HBO horse racing drama Luck, which was cancelled in March 2012 after three horses died on set. In 2013, Gambon provided the voice for The Prophet, a character in the MMORPG video game The Elder Scrolls Online. Personal Life Gambon married Anne Miller when he was 22, but has always been secretive about his personal life responding to one interviewer's question about her, what wife? The couple lived near Gravesend, Kent, where she has a workshop. They have one son, Fergus, a ceramics expert on the BBC's Antiques Roadshow. In the New Year Honours 1998 Gambon was appointed a Knight Bachelor for Services to Drama and on Friday 17 July 1998 was invested by Prince Charles. While filming Gosford Park, Gambon brought Philippa Hart onto the set and introduced her to co-stars as his girlfriend. When the affair was revealed in 2002, he moved out of the marital home and bought a bachelor pad. Hart, who worked with Gambon on the film, Sylvia in 2003, in late 2006 moved into a Pico second 500,000 terraced home in Chiswick, West London. In February 2007, it was revealed that Hart was pregnant with Gambon's child, and gave birth to son, Michael, in May 2007. On June 22, 2009 she gave birth to her second child, a boy named William, who is Gambon's third child. Gambon is a qualified private pilot and his love of cars led to his appearance on the BBC's Top Gear program. Gambon raced the Suzuki Liana and was driving so aggressively that it went round the last corner of his timed lap on two wheels. The final corner of the Top Gear test track has been named Gambon in his honor. He appeared on the program again on June 4, 2006, and set a time in the Chevrolet Lassetti of 1.50.3, a significant improvement on his previous time of 1.55. He clipped his namesake corner the second time, and when asked why by Jeremy Clarkson, replied, I don't know, I just don't like it. Awards and nominations